Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is C++ from Scratch. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about constructors. So in our past couple of videos, we've been looking at structs and classes and how we can use them to create objects. Now, one of the things we haven't talked about so far is how we can say initialize uh, our data members, right? Without having to manually access them through that access, um, that member access operator or that dot operator. Now, the way that we do this in C++ is through a constructor. So we can specify how we want our objects to be constructed using these functions. So let's go ahead and see how we can write some simple constructors today. So we'll go ahead and open up this uh, example called constructors.cpp. And inside of here, I've just copy pasted uh, what we used for our struct example. So here we've created some simple structs called point that takes, uh, or that has two data members, uh, this, these integers x and y, so say some x, y coordinate. And then it has a simple method called print here that prints out x and y. Now in our main function down here, we create some point p, so we create an instance of our struct, um, so an object, then we set x and y equal to 10 and 20 respectively, by directly accessing these members. And then we call uh, this member function print here to print out X and Y. Now, the bit of an awkward thing that we have going on here is that we're initializing X and Y kind of after the fact. So we've created our object and then we start initializing things. So this is a bit awkward here and you know it's gonna make things more error prone. So it'd be nice if we could initialize these things when we were creating our object. Now, one way we can do this without even getting into say constructors is through default member initialization. So for example, I can just give my integers x and y here um, some default to initialize to. So I can say x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 20 here. So now whenever I create an instance of this struct point, x will be 10 and y will be 20. I don't have to set anything um, after I create, say, my point p unless I want to. So here, let's go ahead and save this and we'll compile this constructors.cpp and call our output executable, something like constructors. And let's go ahead and run this executable. And we see unsurprisingly, x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 20. So we create an instance of our struct and it had those defaults. Now, another way that we can initialize, say, um, our data members is through a constructor, right? So a constructor is just this member function that's a little bit special that we can use to initialize um, our object that we're creating. So our constructor is going to have the same name as our struct or class. So in this case, I have a struct called point, so I'll have a constructor called point. And then in this case, I'll just create a struct that, or a, a constructor that doesn't take any parameters here. So just an empty parameter list. And then we'll have some function body here inside of these curly brackets. Now, a bit of a special thing about our constructors here, our constructors do not have a return type. They don't return anything. And we don't have to specify something like void here either. Um, another thing here is we don't call our constructors directly. So we're never going to call this uppercase point uh, constructor method. That's going to happen when we create our objects here. So it gets called kind of indirectly. Okay, so the first way in which we can use a constructor to initialize things is by just filling out, say, this function body. So inside of here, I can say, you know, x is equal to, you know, 20, y is equal to 10. And let's just go ahead and print out std c out, you know, that we're in the uh, constructor, right? So we'll print out constructor um, with an exclamation point and can't forget that semicolon. All right, so let's go ahead and save this. And whenever we create this point P, it's going to call this constructor here. Um, this constructor that doesn't take any parameters to start off with. All right, so we'll save this. We'll recompile constructors.cpp and we'll run that executable. And we see that we ran our constructor. So we see that print and we got x is equal to 20 and y is equal to 10. Now, another way that we can initialize things with our constructor is with this default member initializer list. So for example, you know, without even filling out this function body, what I can do is write this default member initializer list between say these parens and these curly brackets here, uh, separated by this colon. So here I can say, I wanna set x is equal to 10 and then a comma, I wanna set y is equal to 20 here. So this initialization will occur before we run our uh, function, or this constructor body right here. So let's go ahead and save this, and then we can go ahead and compile, and we should see x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 20. So we'll save this and we'll compile. 
and we'll go ahead and run constructors and we see the expected output, the initialization of X and Y. Now, a good question to, of course, ask here is when should I use, say, a member initializer list and when should I do something, say, inside of the body of a constructor? Well, if I need to do something more complicated than just, say, initialize some data members to some values, well, you might need to use, say, the body of your constructor. However, uh, if you have something like a constant variable that we can't do assignment to inside of, say, the body of a constructor, we can still initialize it using, say, a member uh, initializer list like this. Um, another good reason is that we can also have structs or classes or objects um, as data members. So if we want to avoid, say, like some default initialization followed by some further initialization inside of the body of a constructor, we might do that inside of this default, uh, this default, or rather this member initializer list here um, for our constructor. So there are a few different ways that, or, or you know, a few different, you know, things we have to consider whether uh, for when we're choosing between, say, this member initializer list and the body of our constructor. But I'll go ahead and link down, say, this uh, link below the video, this page from CPP Reference on constructors and member initializer lists uh, below the video so you can see some more details on that. Okay, so we've looked at some simple constructors here that are setting, say, some defaults for, say, X and Y. But, of course, there's going to be times where we want to um, specify our own, say, X and Y that we want to uh, set whenever we're creating a point. So we can create multiple versions of multiple constructors here, and we can create constructors that take parameters here. So for example, I can have a constructor called, say, point here that takes, say, two integers. So say some integer new x and some integer new y here. And inside of, say, this constructor, I can say x is equal to new x and then y is equal to new y, right? Very similar to how we had that uh, setter function when we were talking about classes. Uh, except this time, right, I don't have to call a separate method. This is just a constructor here. So instead of using this constructor that takes no parameters, I can use the one that takes two parameters here, these two integers. So I can go ahead and set, you know, x to be five and then y to be, you know, maybe seven in this case. So now instead of calling this constructor that has zero parameters here, I'm going to be calling this constructor that takes these two integer parameters. So I'm setting x and y at the same time I'm creating this object here using this constructor. I don't have to set these values, you know, later on using that member access operator. So we'll go ahead and save this and we'll compile constructors.cpp and we'll run it. And you can see x is equal to five and y is equal to seven. So we use that alternate constructor that we created that takes these two parameters here. Now, of course, we don't have to, you know, initialize these values inside of our uh, body of our constructor here. We can, of course, use our member initializer list. So we can say, I want to create or initialize X using new X, and I want to initialize Y using new Y here. So I'm perfectly capable of doing that as well, and it's, it's, it's absolutely allowed. So we can save this again and run it, and we get the same result. X is equal to five and Y is equal to seven. But now we initialize it using this member initializer list instead of relying on this function body. Okay. Now, one final thing to note before we go ahead and call it for today is that once we start calling um, or creating our own constructors, um, we're going to run into, you know, kind of a, a subtle um, maybe problem with our compiler here, um, or rather our compiler is going to stop doing some things for us. So for example, as soon as we default any constructor here, our compiler is going to stop generating um, the default constructor. So for example, if we go ahead and create this constructor here that takes these two integers, our compiler is no longer going to um, generate one that takes, say, uh, zero parameters here. So now if I go ahead and, you know, get rid of and try to use some default constructor here to create my object, you can see I'm going to get an error, right? So if I go ahead and try to compile, say, constructors.cpp, you can see we get this error of no matching function for uh, function for call to point point. So this default constructor here, right? So we only have now our constructor that takes two integers. Our compiler is no longer generating a default constructor for us. However, we can also always tell our compiler to, you know, hey, go ahead and still generate that um, default constructor 
by doing this point is equal to default, right? So we can still default this constructor um, if we want to, or rather uh, point with parens is equal to default. So then this is going to be valid again, right? We're telling our compiler, hey, you can still go ahead and generate this, even though I'm creating my own constructors as well. Okay, so that's a lot to take in, um, but this, this is still just a brief introduction to uh, constructors. And again, constructors aren't just for say structs. You can also use constructors with classes as well, but you have to watch out for those member access specifiers. But that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. You can find this or any of my other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. As always, I'm Nick and hope you have a nice day.